the other thing that you brought up was shooting in manual mode and you're kind of leading into it here. Here you are in this really intimate, you know, setting and many of your other photographs. You know, do we have time to start fiddling with the camera when you're trying to capture this moment? So we were talking about this beforehand, and that I believe is one of the common myths on the internet, which is, hey, you know, a real photographer shoots only shoots in manual, and you got to shoot in manual, and yada right. da. So tell tell us tell us about that. What you, why is that a myth? Yeah. So um, I mean, again, I can't speak for all the photographers out there, both professionals and amateurs. But what I've what I've come to see, and again, I came from the world of you know shooting color slide film or black and white film but in particular color slide film where if you were a third of a stop off in your exposure when you were photo i was photographing for national geographic or fortune or time or any of the major magazines the picture was on was generally unusable unless it was you know uh, a, a, an event of such historical significance that they do whatever they could to pull yeah. out the, the the image. But when in terms of just aesthetics and you know proper exposure, it was it was un, it was unyielding. You know the, the the precision that we needed, and I and I accomplished that mostly through using a handheld light meter and learning how to read light, how to see light, and then the whole idea. You know, Ansel Adams, eighteen percent gray. You know, where is so so now when i i work 90 percent or more of the time in in uh automatic mode automatic exposure mode and i prefer shutter preferred as opposed to aperture preferred because i want to know my shutter speed because i want to i want my unless i want to have blur in my images or movement i want to be sure that my images will be rock solid in terms of no camera movement and no movement of the subject matter unless I want it. Right. And so therefore that's why I always work in TV or, or shutter preferred. And then um, unless I want a large depth, depth of field, meaning a higher aperture, then I'm not as concerned about my aperture. So that's my mode of working generally. Right. Um, and um, so the way I use my, my meter is with a you know the i use canons the back button uh um, exposure lock but what i'll do is i'll i'll use also the spot metering system you know the spot metering mode in my camera so let's say uh this image that's up now isn't a great example because it's flat light so yeah. it's easier to read but if there's an image let's say where there's a little more of a contrast um um, sorry. <laughs> okay, let's say this. Yeah. This is not exact, but so I'm going to figure. I'm going to look at Dean, and I'm going to go. Okay, where's the 18% gray? I would say it's on the man's T-shirt. Let's right. say that's a that's a that's a fair to go to. Not up in the you know God's light highlight, you know smoky shat, and not in the deep shadows. Or in the glass. I want to look yeah. for that. Yeah, I want to look for that neutral. Exactly. Not in the glass. Not on his skull cap. I want to look for the most neutral. If you like what you know, in technical terms, eighteen percent gray spot. I'll point my meter at that and I'll lock that in. Then I'll recompose and work away. Because one thing I learned early on in doing this is that photography, you're always photography, you're always dealing with variables. It's a it's it's a set of variables, and my goal is to reduce those variables because I don't want to be obsessed with te te the technique and the technical stuff. I want to be obsessed with, you know, this man's cheeks and the angle of the rod and the sunlight and the, you know, light coming in from behind and, you know, what's the guy in the background doing and, right. you know, what's that circle on the left? And, you know, I want to think about the composition and the moment and the emotion. I don't want to be thinking about f-stops and shutter speed. So my way of accomplishing that is reducing the variables. And one way I've done that when it comes to exposure is using shutter preferred mode nail the part of the frame uh maybe if there's one with a with a uh horizon line but yeah that's dusk um, uh, we had one earlier Here, let me go back up this one maybe is that yeah although the light is a little dim but let's just yeah. imagine this scene and it isn't uh whatever at dusk where the light is pretty fat and consistent let's say it's three o'clock in the afternoon you have a bright eye and you maybe have like the dark 
blue or green of the water. Then I would point my um, meter at the horizon line. In mm -hmm. other words, I want to go point it at a place where, you know, basically, you know, half of the frame is filled with sort of highlightish area, half of the frame is filled with um, the shadowy area so that I can get an average reading. Now, there are also times where I might decide, let's go to another picture. Let's see if I can. Uh, sure. Um, Stop uh, me when you. Know, okay. Uh, okay. Let's say this. So there might be times where I want, uh, this isn't a great example. Let's just say where it's like I've got the, 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 the sort of velvety, rich, deep darkness of the woman in the foreground, her, her top. But then you have the sort of either the white of the man's shirt or their skin tones. And so, oh my God, if depending on where I point, depending on what I read off of, I could totally blow the exposure on this. Right. So in this case, I'm going to, again, look for the, the average area. But there are times where I might want to underexpose the frame, okay? In which case then I will go to the brightest part of the frame and I'll take my reading off of that or vice versa. So the point is, the point is that if you shoot in auto mode, you don't do it blindly. You still need to think. You still need to have your photographer's hat on and your photographer's eye and your knowledge and understanding of exposure and highlights and midtones and shadows so that even though these are like nanosecond decisions I'm making, split because this is also a scene that's not going to stay, so I can't be diddling around for 10 seconds, five seconds. These are split like second yeah. decisions. But all this comes from experience. It's like being an athlete. Okay, here's a good example. You have deep shadows, and then you have that that facade, which is the highlight area. Yeah. In this case, I would have pointed my camera, my shutter, sorry, I would have pointed my meter at the highlight area right. because I want it to be deep. So I hope that makes sense. And yeah. like with anything, you know, I always feel like, Everything I've learned, I've basically borrowed or I've observed what others say and do and then borrowed it and integrated it into my own practice. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows. Like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.